Magandang hapon po. Welcome sa Faith Factor. Conversations ignited by the Faith Factor. Makakasama po natin ngayong hapon ang Church History Professor of Recoletos School of Theology. Para po sa inyong mga katanungan o reaksyon, maaari po ninyo itong ipadala sa comment section. Narito po ang ating speaker para sa 500 Years of Christianity in the Philippines special sa topic na The Philippinization of the Church, Pains and Triumphs. 
please welcome Father Emil Kilatan OAR. Mag Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat, mga kapatid ko Kristo. Ito na po, uh, welcome po sa ikalima at huling yugto ng ating salaysay tungkol sa Chris kasaysayan ng Kristyanismo dito sa ating bansa. No? Because this year, we are celebrating the fifth centennial, you know, the 500 years of the arrival or first contact of Christianity in the Philippines. At katulad na sinabi ko, ang Kristyanismo ay isang proseso na tuloy-tuloy at ito'y gawain ng Espiritu Santo na handang ibigay natin ang ating puso sa Panginoon. At bagong lahat, magdasal muna tayo bago natin talakayin ang huling yugto ng ating panayam. Sa ngala ng Ama at ng Anak na Espiritu Santo, Amen. Amang makapangyarihan, salamat po sa pagkakataong ibinigay niyo sa amin ng buhay na ito ay malaman at mabatid ang iyong kalooban sa mundong ito sa pamamagitan niyong simbahan. Hari nawa, isugo mo ang iyong Espiritu Santo upang mapukaw at mamulat ang ating mga mata na hindi mo kami iniiwan sa lahat ng oras at sandali na aming buhay. Ito po'y hinihiling namin sa pamamagitan ng iyong anak na si Yesu Kristo kasama ng Espiritu Santo magpasawalang hanggan. Amen. Maria, ina ng simbahan, ipanalangin mo kami. Sa ngala ng Ama at ng Anak ng Espiritu Santo, Amen. Ang proseso po ng Pilipinization ay napakatagal. No? Nung kapanahon ng Kastila, nagsimula na silang tumanggap na mga native Pilipinos no sa pagpapare no ang kaya nga ang unang recorded date of the first native Filipino ordained to the priesthood was in the was in December of 1698 no taga Pampanga si Francisco Baluyot no at ito po ituloy-tuloy na pero naranasan ng mga kapira ang Pilipino ang hirap nagpaglilingkod no sa ika nga eh, sa vineyard of the Lord no, sapagkat sila ay Pilipino pero marami sa kanila ay pinuri ng mga Kastila at marami sa kanila may hindi nag, naglaon ay talagang dahil sa ingit or selos no, sinisiraan sila tao lang tayo kaya ang ingit at selos ay nandyan pa rin pero hindi nawalan ng loob ang mga unang paring Pilipino at sila ay tuluyang pa naglingkod in spite of the fact ang treatment ng ibang Kastila sa kanila parang second class priest. Pero, pero sila ay nagpersevere. At din naglaon, no, by 1902-1903, nagkaroon natin kauna-unang obispong pare taga Nueva Cáceres o Cáceres ngayon at noong Nueva Cáceres si Jorge Barlin. No. Nang dumating ang mga Amerikano, Ito nga eh, they introduced the, what we call the separation of church and state. Na hindi nakikialam ang pamahalaan sa pamamalakad ng simbahan. Na di tulad ng dati, ang patronato real, ang, at, ang simbahan at ang estado ay nagkakaisa. Kaya nakikial, na, nang hihimasok ang estado, ang hari ng Espanya sa pagpapalakad ng simbahan noong panahon ng Kastila. At nang... Dumating ang mga Amerikan, ito'y natigil. They introduce what we call today separation of church and state, yung function nila. Ngayon, nang dumating ang mga Amerikano, mayroon na mga obispong Amerikano na pumalit sa mga Kastila, sa mga dioceses ng Pilipinas noon. Pero ang pinakamatagal na Amerikanong or Irish American na, na Archbishop of Manila, ay si Michael Do O'Doherty. Siya ay Archbishop of Manila from 1916 to 1949. Dito siya namatay sa Manila. At siya, ang labi niya ay nakalibing sa Manila Cathedral. No? 33 years as Archbishop of Manila. Kahit siya ika nga dayuhan, anong ginawa niya? He, he see to it, he saw it, ano, a realization na unting-unting ano, ang mga Pilipinong pare ay Ika nga pinipili niya ang mga mahuhusay, mga banal, para maging obispo. Kaya between 1916 and 1914, 
dumadami na ang mga Pilipinong naging obispo. No? Kabilang dito ay si Monsignor Gabriel Reyes, arch, naging Archbishop of Cebu. Ang unang Ilocanong obispo, no? si Monsignor Alfredo Berzosa, naging Bishop ng Lipa. Monsignor Santiago Sancho, Bishop of Nueva Segovia. Sopronio Hakbang, Bishop of Calvayo. Monsignor Luis del Rosario, SJ, Bishop ng Sambuanga. Si Monsignor Cesar Maria Guerrero, naging Auxiliary Bishop of Manila. Ang mga yan, no, by between 1916 and 1949, there were around 13 Filipino bishops. No? At sila ngayon ang naging obispo na na, ng, sa mga dioceses na pinamahalaan nila. Ito ay magandang sing, sing, uh, uh, hudyat para sa atin na unting-unti ng nagiging Pilipino ang mga ang Ang, ang pamamahala ng ating simbahang katolika sa mga obispong Pilipino na nangangasiwa sa mga dioceses. Kaya, between 1916 and 94, there were already 13 Filipino bishops. No? Pero ang mga mission districts like apostolic vicariates at prefecture, no? ito ay mga mission territories, ang nangangasiwa pa dito ay mga dayuhan. Katulad ng Apostolic Vicarates of Montañosa, CICM, mga Belgians, Kalapan, mga SBD, mga Germans, at ang Apostolic Prefecture ng Palawan ang nangasiya yung mga Recoletong Kastila. Pero the rest of the diocese and the two archdiocese, Cebu and Manila, ang mga obispo na ay mga Pilipino. At hindi lang dyan, nung panahon ng Kastila, lilima lang ang mga ele- Ecclesiastical Territories in 1595, Archdiocese of Manila, Nueva Segovia, Nueva Casalet, at Cebu, at later in the 1860s, no, ang Diocese of Haro. Kaya nga, nang dumating ang, ang mga Amerikano at nagkaroon ng separation of church and state, no, no, ginawa ang mga ap- apostolic delegates, no, starting with Archbishop no, Guidi, Archbishop Adius, sinagurado nila na ang mga distrito or dioceses ay itataguyod. No? Kaya in 1910, in ika nga response to the Quemare Sinico of Pope Leo XIII, nadagdagan pa ng limang ecclesiastical territories ang Pilipinas maliban sa naunang lima. In 1910, Diocese of Tugigaraw, Diocese of Lipa, Diocese of Calbayog, Diocese of Zamboanga, and the Apostolic Prefecture of Palawan. Palawan. These were created in 1910. No, Other ecclesiastical ter- territories were created from 1932 to 1945. Bacolod, Cagayan, Palo, that is in, late, in uh, Leyte, Surigao, Mindanao, northeastern part of Mindanao, Tagbilaran, Bohol, 1941, and two apostolic bica- uh, vicariates. No? 1936, ang vicariate ng Palawan, and later on, from prefecture to vicariate, ang vicariate of Montaño, so which we call ba- the Diocese of Baguio today. No? At dumadami ang gawaing ikangang katoliko. No? And even in the social action, mga katoliko ang nagsisigawa. Pare, madre, at mga laiko. Dahil dito sa dedikasyon ng mga katoliko, no? in 1937, the Philippines was placed in the international map for the first time. Ano nangyari? In, in, um, in 1937, the 33rd International Congress, no, Eucharistic Congress, was hosted in Manila. At ito'y ginanap sa Luneta. Kaya nga, this 33rd International Eucharistic Congress in the, was the first held in, the, in Manila no, from February 3 to February 7 of 1937. Nga, kaya nga, it was done It was held during the pontificate of Pope Pius XI. It was the first Eucharistic, International Eucharistic Congress held in Asia. Tayo ang sikat by that time in 1937. Kaya nga, during these days no, of this Eucharistic Congress, International Eucharistic Congress, there were more than 600 people no, who attended the pontifical mass which was held at the Rizal Park. At sa closing, no, 
no for the first time the Filipinos through a radio broadcast narinig nila ang mensahe ni Pope Pius the 11 no pero ang kanyang pag ano ang kanyang mensahe ay nasa wikang Espanyol at ang mga generation at that time no nakakalimutan ng Espanyol pero yung mga matatanda naalala pang Espanyol kaya medyo mixed feeling ang mga Pinoy noon na magsalita ang Santo Papa Pope Pius the 11 in Spanish giving his message and congratulations to the Filipino Catholics who hosted the first in Asia the International Eucharistic Congress. Hindi lang 'yan, no? Ito ang uh, Eucharistic Congress na ito na talagang no, ika nga eh no, dinayo na hindi lang mga pinili sa buong Pilip, mga dayuhan sa ibang bansa pumunta dito, no? Sabi nga ni Car- the late Cardinal Vidal, he was only, no? Seven or eight years old, no, he attended that congress, no, you can, to receive his first Holy Communion. Anjan siya, nung Dalit Cardinal Bidal, he shared it with us, no, he attended that, that historical event. Not only that, the Recollects contributed to the official hymn of the International Congress. Pero, tandaan nyo, majority pa ng mga tao, maliban sa kabataan, nakakaintindi pa ng wikang Espanyol. Kaya ang hymn was in the Spanish called Gloria a Jesus. No? This was, uh, the music was composed by a recollect priest, Domingo Carcerier, and the lyrics was composed by Don Emeterio Barcelon. Okay. So, yan po ang kitagalang Gloria a Jesus. No? Ang national hymn or the official hymn of the 33rd International Eucharistic Congress in 1937. Who was the apostolic delegate at that time, no? Na talagang tumulong na maging Pilipino ang simbahang Katoliko sa Pilipinas. He was none other than His Excellency Guillermo Piani, no? He was the apostolic delegate to the Philippines, no, from 1922 until 1948. He contributed for the organization of seminaries throughout the Philippines and promoted teaching catechism in parishes, the confraternity of the Christian doctrine, and the involvement of the laity in social action called the Catholic action. Kaya hindi tutulog-tulog ang mga Katoliko noon. They are involved in social work no, sa Pilipinas. Okay. Ngayon, isa pa nangyari nandito na nangyari. It was established by Catholic Americans, lay Catholic, the establishment of the Knights of Columbus. This was on April 23, 1905. The first council was established in the Philippines and this was council number 1000, no? It was held in Manila exclusively for the Americans. However, between 1907 and 1908, tinatanggap na ang mga kalalakihang Pilipino na maging first degree knights, no? And by 1920, the membership of the Knights of Columbus Council became predominantly Filipino. May dalawang pari dito, Jesuita ang nag-introduce ng Knights of Columbus sa buong Pilipinas. Who were they? Si Father George Wilman, SJ. He was called the father of the, the founder of the Knights of Columbus in the Philippines. At tinulungan siya ng isa pang diocesan priest no? na naging Jesuita, si Reverend Father Isaias Edralin, ang maternal uncle ni the late President Ferdinand Marcos. No? These two promoted vigorously the spread of the Knights of Columbus in the Philippines, especially in the north, in Luzon. Kaya nga, masigasig ang no, these all-male members of um, fraternity, which we call today Knights of Columbus, na hindi sila tumitigil upang itaguyod ang gawaing kristyano sa lahat ng parokya at sa bawat pamilyang katoliko. No? We were granted, ika nga, that, that uh, we became a commonwealth, uh, we might say, government under the Americans. And we were given a 10-year transition before we were given no, total political independence. This was called the Tidings Magdafi Law. Okay? But between 1936 and 1946, no, tayo sinakop ng mga Hapon, World War II, 1941 to 1945. No? At first, Depende yan, no? kung sino ang mga officials na hapon, depende ang treatment nila sa mga Pilipino. Merong mababait, 
meron ding masasamang ugali. Sa masasamang ugaling mga hapon, no, kasama, kasam, kas, kasamang pal, maraming pare, madre, ang pinatay, including mga kababae ang ginawang comfort women. Ibang mga bata, mga sagot, pinapatay din nung panahon ng hapon. Depende kung sino ang namumuno sa isang garrison. Depende. Sa Mindoro, Kalapan Mindoro, ang defender ng rights ng mga Pilipinos laban sa ka, mga abuso ng mga, mga hapon, ay ang obispo ng Kalapan, si William Finiman, SVD. No? Siya po ang ika nga obispo ng Bikarit ng Kalapan, ng buong Mindoro at that time. Pinagtanggol niya ah, ang mga kababaihan laban sa abusadong mga hapon na gustong gawin ng mga hapon ang mga babaeng Pilipina na maging comfort women. Pinagtanggol niya. Nang malaman na siya, even though he was a German citizen, later on, he was a naturalized Pilipino. Nang malaman na hindi na siya... Siya ay inaresto, no, tinorture, at nilipat sa Maynila. No? Habang siya ay sinakay sa barko papuntang Maynila between, but between Kalapan and Batangas, anong ginawa ng mga hapon sa kanya? Tinalay niya siya ng bato at tinulak sa dagat. At siya ay nalunod at yan ang kanyang kinamatay. He was a martyr for the flock, no, for his flock. Yan po si William Finiman. Ang masakla po ay ang liberation. No? Oo nga, niliberate tayo pero mer- malaki ang collateral damage. Sa Maynila lang, ha? more than 100,000 civilians ang nasawi. No? Karamihan dito sa ay ang, ay ang mga civilian ay mga babae at mga bata. At katabi nila ay ang mga pare, mga religious na pinatay din ng mga hapon. Kaya nga, the Japanese during the liberation, they went in rampage. Talagang nagwala at ginawang human shield ang mga Pilipinos at ang mga kaparean at mga religious noong liberation. Kaya nga, no, in 1945, no, Monsignor Pedro Apostolic they tele, sent a telegram to Rome. Who were the victims of these Japanese atrocities during the liberation? Ang namatay, 14 Augustinians, Six Recollects, ten Franciscan, at anim na Kapuchin na kinulong sa isang selda sa Port Sons at hinagisan ng mga granada. No? Hindi lang yan. No? Meron mga Kapuchinong pinatay at sinaksak ng bayoneta sa Singalong, kanilang kumbento sa Singalong. No? Sampung Vincentian Fathers binaril sa Ermita at labing, labing anim na Christian Brothers of Lasal ay sinaksak ng bayoneta sa kanilang Ha? sa kanilang eskwelahan sa Lasal College. No? Four Columban fathers were taken by the Japanese military police. No? Hindi na sila nakita. May mga seminarista at mga secular priest sa Tayabas, pinatay. One Jesuit scholastic. At marami pa. No? There were 85 victims, no? members of the church, seminarians, who became collateral damage in this rampage. No? Kaya nga, ang... Ika nga, ang sakripisyo at ang pagdurusa ng mga Pilipino ay andyan rin ng mga kaparian at mga religious na nakikiramay rin. At ang kanilang sakripisyo ay ibinubuwis na nila kanilang buhay para mailagtas lamang ang mga Pilipinong nasa kanilang pangangalaga. At after the war, no, Monsignor Guillermo Piani established the Catholic Welfare Organ, the CWO, and isang pare, Amerikano, Father Hurley, was appointed Secretary General. No? Sila ay nangolekta ng mga donasyon upang no, maging relief sa mga biktima ng digmaan during the liberation. So they were able to distribute 906,030 pesos at that time worth of goods. And this was then for five months, no? no? And hindi lang yan. By 1948, they were able to gather more, to help more 1.8 million people, no? During the reconstruction, no? After the war, handling 1,000 pounds of goods a day just to support the food and ration during the reconstruction period. Kaya nga, Ang Catholic Welfare Organization na pinangunahan ng apostolic at ang mga miyembro ay mga obispos ng Pilipinas, later on in 1968, this CWO would become the CBCP 
we know today. Okay. Ngayon, ano ang nangyari sa simbahan from liberation to the eve of martial law, 1971? Ako, marami tayong storya dyan. No? Chika-chika lang yan. Chika minute. Kasi, hindi ko pwedeng bigyan ng mga detalye. Chika minute sa history. Okay. December to 1956, ang kauna-unahang Pangulo ng Pilipinas or the only Philippine President, no? we were celebrating the Second National Eucharistic Congress. No? Ito'y pinanganuhan ng mga member ng Apostleship of Prayer okay? at ang mga Adorasyon ng Turna Filipina at that time. They celebrated the solemnity of the Sacred Heart and they, they, did, and they dedicated the Philippines no to the sec- ang nanguna dito ay ang pangulo ng Pilipinas ay na si Ramon Magsaysay kaya nga at the end of the National Eucharistic Congress December 2 umuulan pa nga eh President Ramon Magsaysay consecrated the Philippines to the Sacred Heart siya lang ang kaisa-isang presidente ng Pilipinas na nanguna sa consecration ito sa pagkatanda natin by 1950 during his term Malaki ang problema niya. Kung meron tayong NPA ngayon, noon ang hook balahak problem. Okay. In 1956, ano nangyari? No? The Rizal Law, no? that, that Filipinization of the Philippine schools should be uh, inspired by the writings of the, the Rizal Law was enacted. At ang Catholic Church ay nagreklamo because these books of Rizal, Noli Mectangere and El Pilibusterismo, no, were banned and they were placed in the Index of Prohibited Books. Kaya nga nagkaroon ng problema dito ang mga Catholic schools. no. But the late Horacio de la Costa presented the good points of the, of the Rizal law and to be able to understand Rizal for the young no, without being anti-Catholic. So si Horacio... The Jesuit no, priest presented this, no, good points of the uh, Rizal Law that was enacted in 1956. Okay. So, all of us, since high school, college, no, kailangan natin mabasa ang Noli Mectangere at El Pilibusterismo. Ang tan- tanong ko, naunawaan ba natin? Meron ba tayong natutunan? Yan ang itanong natin no, sa ating sarili. Ngayon, another development of Filipinization. Kung ang ng mga Pilipinong paring diocesan ay nahirapan, merong mga religious na pare na nagpresent, nagpetisyon kay Pope Pius XII of the Filipinization of the religious orders in the Philippines. No? Six Filipino religious priests sent a 90-page memorial to the Vatican addressed to Pope Pius XII, urging for greater recognition of Filipino in the Philippine Church, especially in the different religious orders and congregations. No? Kasi ang dominant, ang mga religious orders at that time, ang dominant members ay mga banyaga, kokonti pa mga Pilipino. At ang uh, naranasan ng mga Pilipinong religious ay secondary position lamang ang ibinibigay sa kanila sa pangangasiwa ng kanilang pra-ecclesiastical provinces at mga apostolates. Sino ang mga anim na Pilipinong ito? Si Father Ilario Rim, Jesuits, Father Fray Benito Vargas, Dominican, Father Fray Salvador Calzado, Recoleto, Father Fray Antonio Garin, Agustinian, Fray Julio Obial, Franciscan, and Father Ambrosio Manaligod, SBD. Dahil dominant pa ang mga banyang kakonti pa mga Pilipino members sa mga religious orders at congregation, their move for the Filipinization of the province of the ecclesiastical provinces of their order and con- con- uh, congregation was still premature. Ano nangyari? These pioneers no, were, were dealt with silence. No? They were silenced by the respective religious major superior. Ano nangyari sa kanila? No? Sorry to say, lack of time. Tsaka na lang tayo magchikahan. Okay. Basta they were silence. They were silence. No? Now, in 1949, Bishop O'Doherty passed away and the former Archbishop of Cebu was transferred to the Archdiocese of Manila. He was Gabriel Reyes, the first Filipino Archbishop of Manila. 
Now, during his time, we might say his, time, his term, no? ano nangyari? The Filipinization of the Schools. No? This was introduced by Senator Roselier Lim, the cousin of Father Ilario, Ilario Lim. Masama ang nangyari kay Father Hilary Rim. Because of his, this proposal of Filipinization, he was expelled from the Jesuit, from the society. At ang kanyang pisan sa sama ng loob, no, he presented for the Filipinization of all religious schools. These are Catholic schools belonging to the religious orders and congregation to be supervised by the Filipino bishops. This was the bill that was No, the dispute in 1958. No? However, no, many opposed this, especially the SEAP, the Catholic Educators Association of the Philippines, because on ground nila, the liberty and rights of the church were being, uh, we might say, uh, interfered by the state. No? Kaya nga, majority of these schools were still handled by foreign uh, members of the religious orders and congregation. Not only that, no? No, this was this will be resolved only in 1973 when Marcos declared the Filipinization Act of all schools, private and non-sectarians to be that the president should be a Filipino citizen, the president and heads of this school should be a Filipino citizen, not foreigners. No, this was only uh, realized during the time of Marcos in 1973. Not only that, no, between before martial law, we had the first Filipino cardinal. He was from, I think he's from Lubao, another Kapampangan. If Guagua Pampanga gave us the first Filipino native priest, a Kapampangan became the first Filipino cardinal. No? On March 31, 1960, Archbishop Rufino Santos of the Archdiocese of Manila was elevated to the cardinate by, who became a saint, No? Pope John the Twenty Third, no, siyang kauna-unahang Pilipino ng naging kardinal. During his term as uh, Archbishop of Manila, no, the same Cardinal Rufino Santos no, proposed to the Catholic bishops to open a collegio, no? a residence, uh, we may say, for the Filipino clergy who were studying in Rome, and this was uh, it, uh, the it was pushed by Pope John the Twenty Third. Kaya nga this was approved no, by the Filipino bishops on between January 26 and 31 na mag-open ng isang school at gumawa ng isang kolegyo. No? And this was uh, accepted by Pope John the Twenty Third. Kaya on October 7, the Feast of the Holy Rosary, the Pope himself, John the went to the kolegyo and he was the he personally blessed and inaugurated the kolegyo Filipino in Via Aurelia, Rome. No, aside from Pope John the Twenty-third, who visited the John Paul the Second also had his uh, visit to the Collegio no, during his pontificate. So the Collegio was blessed by two pontif Pope, uh, papal visits: John the Twenty-third, who inaugurated it, and later on, Pope John Paul II. No. 1962 1965 no, ang Second Vatican Council. Ano yon, Father? No, madami yan. No, ilang taon yan, no? Three years and in the making, no? And there are many documents. Pero masasabi ko sa inyo, nagbago ng simbahan. Paano yun? Ito narinig ko sa mga tiyahin ko na sa Latin. Nagulat sila ang misa, nasa wika nilang Tagalog, at ang pare, nakaharap na sa kanila. Uy, pogi pala si Father. Ayan. No? Yan na ang hudyat ng Second Vatican Council, the, the reform of the mass. No? Noon, ang reklamo natin, Latin ng misa. Hindi natin maintindihan. Pero ngayon, nasa ating wika na, ang problema, wala namang sumasagot. No? Ang misalat, ginagawa pamaypay pa. So, ano yan? So, para ma na maunawa natin ang banal na misa, ito'y pinahintulutan maging misa sa ayon sa ating wika. Sapagkat ang salita ng Diyos ay dapat nating maunawaan at no, humilom sa ating mga kaluluwa. Kaya nga, this is... This is One, this was one of the effects of the Second Vatican Council, no? the reform of the Holy Mass. Okay. 1970, between this November 27, 29, the first papal visit. Uh, naging santo na siya, si Pope Paul VI. Kaya nga, 
he was the first pope to visit our country. But his visit was limited only within Manila because he stayed only for three days. But isa sa kanyang pinakamagandang ginawa sa Delpan District ng Tondo, binisita niya isang mahirap na pamilya at ang parish na pinangangasiwa ng mga rekoleto. Ang Delpan District of Tondo. He was the first pope to visit that district which was our, which is our parish of Our Lady of Peace and Good Boys in Tondo on November 29, 1970 before he left he left or he went back to Rome on that same date in 1970 of November 29. Ngayon, ano naman ang sitwasyon ng Pilipinas from 1972 to 2021? Naku, maganda yan. Maganda, maganda. No? Summary lang binibigay ko sa inyo. You know, September 21, 1972, no? Proclamation number 1080, minemorize naman yan sa eskwelahan ng elementary. What was it? No, it was a proclamation by Ferdinand E. Market placing the whole Philippines under martial law and the habeas corpus was suspended. Naku, ano yung habeas corpus? Yan ang dinamin ng elementary namin. O, malalaman niyo yan kapag inaresto ka na walang ika nga eh, ika nga eh, proper ano, ika, you're the enemy of the state, wala kang proper ika nga eh, investigation at uh, justice. No, it was suspended, no? So what was the stand of the CBCP during this period of martial since 1972 until it was uh, taken away by Marcos himself no on the on paper but in reality he was still in power no The stand of the bishop is this they use the words critical collaboration with the government under martial law What is the what do you mean critical collaboration The bishops agreed the Filipino bishops agreed that they will praise No? the good and positive accomplishments of martial law. However, critical, they will also say or protest something against the abuses committed by martial law. So this is what, what we mean of critical collaboration. Pupurihin nilang magandang accomplishments, pero pupunahin nila kapag ito ay inabuso ng military lalo ng karapatang pantao. Okay. Ito ang posisyon ng CBCP hanggang mawala si Marcos. Kaya nga, no, ang obispo ng, Met, ng buong Maynila noon, talagang no, tinatawag nating the giant no, of the Archdiocese was none other than the late Archbishop Jaime Cardinal Sin. No? He became Archbishop of Manila from 1974 until 2005. Siya ang, kung ang El Salvador ay merong Oscar Romero, tayo ay merong Cardinal Sin. Siya ay buhay na buhay noon, talagang pinaglalaban niya ang karapatan pantao at karapatan ng simbahan laban sa mga negative elements ng martial law. Okay. Kaya siya ang critic ng ano, Marcos administration. But during his term, no, no boy pa si Cardinal Sin talagang ano, he he was blessed by two papal visits, no? By the same pope, John Paul II, he visited the Philippines talagang mahabang ang stay niya dito from February 16 to February 27, 1981, no? At uh, sa isang napakagandang no, ika nga ay naganap, no, sa kanyang pastoral visit sa Pilipinas. Ginawa dito ang kauna-unang beatification outside of Rome. At ginawa dito sa Luneta. At dito nagkaroon tayo ng unang-unang Pilipinong santo, si San Lorenzo Ruiz de Manila, kasama ang kanyang mga Dominican martyrs. No? Siya ang kauna-unang Pilipinong santo. Tandaan ninyo, ang ating unang santo ay laiko, hindi pare, hindi religious. No? He was a He was a family man. 1985, the closing of the Marian year. No, I was there. No, at the Crino Grandstand. No, and we listened to the famous no, Holy Rosary Crusader, the late Patrick Payton. No, sa kanyang magandang mensahe, and he gave us the blessing, holding our rosaries with our palms. Sa ating kami makamay. No, he gave the blessing the pontifical blessing that he was given that right no for the blessing of all the rosary during the 
crusades, no? Rosary crusades. And he gave us a beautiful mission of consecrating our country to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Yan po si Padre Payton. He was here on December 8, 1985. Of course, ang kapangyarihan na makatao at makamundo ay may hangganan. At dahil dito, nagkaroon tayo ng pag-aalsa na mapayapa na tinatawag natin People Power Ed Sawan from February 22 to 25 in 1986. Para maiwasan ang pagdanak ng dugo, no? si Cardinal Sin mismo, no? sa pamamagitan ng Nanare, tinawag niya ang mga faithful na suportahin natin si Enrile at Ramos, no? who defected from the Marcos Crown, para maiwasan ang pagdanag ng dugo. At dito na nagsimula ang People Power One, ang isang pamamaraang pagbabago na walang kakarahasan na nangyari. At dahil dito, since marami ng kumampe at ika nga pumunta sa kampo ni Enrile at ni Ramos, si Marcos ay napilitang umalis ng bansa. Okay. Yan po mga images ng People Power One. Mga Pilipinong Katoliko, dadadala ang mahal na Birhen, Santo Nino, Rosario, mga madre nagdadas harap ng mga sundal na may dalang ar- baril. These, these were soldiers ordered by Marcos from Mindanao. They were battle-hardened soldiers. Yet ang nakita nila, ang kaharap nila ay mga madre, mga laiko na may dalang Rosario, imahin, Bibles. Anong gagawin nila? Babarilin nila mga ito? Makonsensya naman sila. No? At nakonsensya naman awan ng Diyos at hindi nagkaroon ng pagdanak ng dugo. Okay. Isa pang pangyayari sa during, the, uh, arch, during the time of Cardinal Sin, no? the Second Plenary Council of the, of the Philippines was held from January 20 to February 17, 1991. Anong purpose na ito? Na i-translate and implement the decrees of the Second Vantical Council in the Philippine Church. And this was not attended only by the clergy, but also by the laity. No? There, were a, there, were, there was a total of 489 participants, including 96 bishops, 181 priests, 21 major superiors, 12 presidents or rectors of Catholic universities, 24 heads of deans of seminaries, and, of course, 146 no? persons representing the lay faithful. Kaya no this year we're going we are celebrating this 30th anniversary. Ang tanong ko, how effective was what is PCP2 sa ating Filipinization of the church that should be the church of the poor. The church that should be a community of disciples, no? Our mission should be a renewed integral evangelization and toward building up the new civilization of life and love. That is the focus of PCP2. Nagagawa ba natin to? Na-accomplish ba na? After 30 years. Hello? Hello? Mga pare, mga madre, mga laity. Okay. Hello? Okay. No? At maganda pa during the time of Cardinal Sin, ang pangalawang bisita ni Pope John Paul II sa Pilipinas coinciding two important events. The 1995 World Youth Day in Manila from January 11 to 15. And not only that, no, in 1995, Manila, Cebu, no, Nueva Cáceres, oh, Cáceres today, and Nueva Cebu were celebrating the 400 years of its establishment as, a dioc- as dioceses. Kaya di, nandan dito for the second time si Pope John Paul II. No? Merong nga observation ng si Pope John Paul, no, lumabas sa eroplano, nahirap ang maglakad kaya may baston. Nang makita niya ang mga katolikong Pilipino at mga ibang mga katolik sa ibang bansa na diriwang at napakasaya, yung baston, pinaglalaroan lang niya. Inikot-ikot niya sa daliri, nakakalakad na siya. So, sabi nga di Bishop Bacani, we added no another year of life of the pope we and we invigorated the pope when he saw the fate of the filipinos during this world youth day kaya happy happy ang mga ang mga ang mga pilipino ang mga obispo sa nakikitang himala na nangyari kay pope john paul he was reinvigorated 
1997, to implement PCP2, the Second Provincial Council of Manila was held no? from August 15 to August 31 of 19. That is the how to implement no? this, we might say, PCP2. The Provincial Council is a deliberate assembly for particular churches or of an ecclesiastical province through the representative of the Christian people. How to implement no? the PCP2 to, to be a church of the community of disciples and a church for the poor no? using integral evangelization and new evangelization of approach through the basic ecclesial communities. Kaya nga, sino nang nakalawag dito? Mga diocese ng Brisal Province, Malolos, Imus, Laguna, at ang Apostolic Bikari at that time of Palawan. Okay? At maganda 2015, we had the third, we might say, we might say, um, the fourth papal visit. No? Pope Francis visits the Philippines from January 15 to 19. No? Ang tawag sa kanya, ika nga eh, Lolo Kiko. Kaya he remembered that, that greeting. No? Not only that, the next year was the 51st International Eucharistic Congress held in Cebu from January 24 to 31. No? And, of course, during this pandemic, in spite of the pandemic, dinadala pa natin si Kristo sa lansangan para magpaalala sa mga, manan sa mga mananampalataya na hindi tayo iniiwan, hindi tayo iniiwanan ng Panginoon. Kahit may social distancing, andyan pa rin ang Panginoon. Kaya nga, the Vet Second Vatican Council declared that the future humanity ay nasa binigay sa kamay natin. Paano natin dapat no, panghawakan ang pananagutan na binigay sa atin ng Diyos para pangalagaan at pangisawa ng kanyang simbahan? Nasa sa atin yan. He continued to be present no, in His Son through the power of the Holy Spirit. Through the sacraments, especially the, that sacramental presence in the Eucharist. It is done by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that is the, who is the protagonist for the growth of the church. And the church is always reaching out to the people. And the church is in communion with the suffering members of the body of Christ. From the, since the year 2000, ito po ang mga paring pinatay, pinaslang ng walang habag. At dito nahayag na ang pagdurusa ng ating mga kapatid na Pilipino ay kasama rin ang kaparian at ang mga religious. Hindi kita hindi kayo nag-isa. No? Marami ring pinapatay, maraming sinisiraan because they wanted to be silenced for, for those who abuse their power. No? Kaya nga we are the church of martyrs as as Tertullian say, the blood of Christians is the seed ang dugo ang nagbibigay lakas sa simbahan. Kaya nga ang krus ay dapat nating pasanin sapagkat ang krus na yan, nakasama ang Panginoon, ay magbibigay buhay sa atin. Kaya mga kapatid, we, we are not only a community of disciples, we are not only a church for the poor, but we are the church of martyrs na handang itagawin ang katotohanan. Kaya sinasabi ko sa mga nang abuso na kanilang kapangyarihan, you may silence the truth, but the truth will speak out later on and you will be accountable to that truth. And as the historian, pagan historian Roman Levy says, truth can be eclipsed, but it can never be extinguished. Amen. Maraming salamat, Father, sa napakalinaw at uh, makasaysayan talaga po na uh, pagkukwento uh, tungkol sa 500 years of Christianity, pains and triumphs. So, Father, meron po tayong mga manonood na siyempre nagpapaabot ng kanilang mga mensahe. Una po si Romel Lyson Pulusan. Hello po, Father Emil. Maraming salamat po sa sharing about the history of transition of our Catholicism in the Philippines. God bless po. Watching from France. Ito naman po, comment ni Satchiel Macasias. God bless you, Fry Emil, and thank you for sharing us your gift of wisdom. 
Si Benny, may question naman po si Benny Payus. Father, do we have the lists of missionaries who died during the World War II? Are they not qualified to be saints? Uh, meron tayong mga listahan, no? nasa mga religious orders. In fact, ang kanila mga remains, andun sa mga kanyang-kanyang puntod ng mga religious orders. Iba dyan, hindi naman ay dyan, nasa puntod sa San Agustin Church. The names are there. Now, to promote their, their, ano, their, ano, their sanctity for canonization, depende na po yan sa religious orders at sa Archdiocese of Manila where they died. So, it's the movement of the laity and of the hierarchy no, for that move, for, to, for them to be beatified martyrs. No? Tasa sa kanila po yan. Okay. Thank you po, Father. Uh, galing pa rin po kay Benny Payus, like Bishop William Finiman, SVD, who died as martyr, is there a cause for him to be a saint? Yes, the, the SVD uh, missionaries in Mindoro started to open the process of his beatification. Ginagawa na, no? Ginagawa na po yan sa Kalapan, Mindoro. So, ito po ay sinimula na noon ng mga SVD missionaries ng Mindoro. Thank you po. Galing naman po comment ni Carl Lawrence Alday. Thank you very much, Father Emil, for sharing your knowledge on the history of the Christianization of the Philippines. I have been watching all your talks from part one up to day. Thank you very much and God bless you po. Watching from Balayan, Batangas. Comment naman po ni Andy Simeon. Thanks, Father Emil. Very informative. Maybe next time you can give a talk on the Filipinization, on the liturgy or development of folk Catholicism. Uh, meron rin pong comment si Jam Jam. Informative. Long live, Father. Si Benny po, merong follow-up question. How can we encourage the youth of today to be a living witnesses of the gospel in the modern technologies? Diyan po papasok ang misyon ng ating simbahan. No? Remember always, no, to become an effective evangelizer, kailangan mahubog ka. Ang paghuhubog ng pagiging evangelizer ay nagsisimula sa tahanan. At hindi gagabayan tayo ng simbahan. Kaya nga meron tayong mga formation talks sa parishes. No? How to become effective evangelizer. And remember, no, meron tayong PYC, Pastoral Youth Council, No, ang mga kasamahan ng kabataan sa iba't ibang segment ng society, andyan, dapat nating pasukan at i-evangelize ang mga kabataan da, na in turn they will become evangelizers using the nano-gadgets that we have. No? Ako, no, ang, ang, uh, nahirapan ako gumamit ng, ano, ng, ng computer. No? Nag-aaral pa ako, pero yung mga kabataan, alam, sana itap natin sila to become ano, tech Tech, nano, we call it evangelizers, para maipalaganap nilang salita ng Diyos sa nanotechnology sa ating kapanahunan. Salamat po. Meron pong comment galing kay Ivan. Thank you po, Father, sa history ng pananampalataya natin as a Filipino since 1521. May God bless you always. Comment din po galing kay James Roden de, Leje, de Lejos. Father Emil, thank you for your wisdom and information. Marami po akong natutunan sa inyo. God bless po sa inyo. Isa naman pong katanungan, Father, uh, ano po ang inyong take? sa Kasi as a church historian, uh, meron pong lumalabas ngayong kasalukuyang panahon na reconstruction of history. Ano po ang inyong masasabi dito? Um, history can be reconstructed to data. I think what you mean, revision of history. No, revisionism. No? Ang ibig sabihin niya. No? Revisionism, there has, has two, two, ano, two sides. The positive. Pag merong error ang data at merong data na, na nag-support sa, pa, na, sa pagkakamali, pinapalitan na. We revise it. No? We correct it. Because there were errors. This is what we call positive revisionism. No? Ang negative revisionism, no, sinasabi, hindi nangyari. No? Or, ina-emphasize ang pagkakamali ng isa, dinamay ng lahat. We call it the black legend. No? This is the thing that we have to avoid with the negative part of 
no negative revisionism in history. Hindi nangyari o ang abuso na nangyari sa isang isolated generalized gumawa ng black legend. So this is the negative side of revisionism that we have to avoid. The positive side, we correct a historical error based on new discoveries with authenticated documents. No? These are the two phases of historical revisionism. Thank you, Father. Pwede po ba natin ding ibahagi sa puntong ito yung mga lessons po natin dito sa pains and triumphs of Filipinization? Okay, ang ang ating ang aking nais kong ibahagi sa inyo, lahat tayo ay may adhikain sa buhay. No? The early Filipinos, ang adhikain nila maging malaya. Ang mga Filipino priest, adhikain na ma-recognize sa kanilang kontribusyon. Kanoon din ang mga religious priest at 1956, no? They want to be recognized, no? Itong adhikain, pati ang mga laiko, adhikain na maging kaparte sa pagtataguyod ng simbahan sa ating bansa. Pero ang bawat adhikain ay sinusubukan. Kung ito ba ay ang motibo ay ba'y malinis o hindi malinis. Kaya dadaan tayo sa karayon ng pagsubok. Kapag nakadaan na tayo at naka, nakadaan sa pagsubok na yan, dyan natin matatama sa ang tagumpay ng ating adhikain totoo at tapat. Kaya nga, Pero tayong sinasabi, no pain, no gain. ba diba? sa exercise, ganun rin. No? There should be pain in order to taste the triumph of our desire to be good Christians, good servants, and most of, most of all, excellent disciples. Every desire, every, we might say, vision, mission, should undergo this purification. Yan po masasabi ko sa inyo. Maraming salamat, Father. Ngayon po sa ating pagdiriwang ng 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines, ang tema po natin ay gifted to give. Ano po ang inyong uh, masasabi dito sa tema na ito? Yan ang na, 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 napakaganda. Sa simula ng unang misa na ginawa sa Limasawa, ang unang binyag sa Cebu noong 1521, at ang pagbigay ng Santo Niño sa Reina ng Cebu in 1521, ito'y mga hudyat na ang Pilipino, ang ating mga kababayan, kahit hindi pa tayo bansa noon, not, we were not a nation at that time, tayo nakalaan na sa pag-ibig ng Diyos. Pinunla na ang pananampalatay at pag-ibig ng Diyos sa bawat pusong Pilipino. Kaya makikita natin dyan, iba ang Pinoy na talagang Kristiyano. Binigay sa atin ang pananampalataya. Lumago ang pananampalataya na libre. Ngayon, it's our time to share that faith with others na libre. Yan po ang hamon sa atin ng simbahan. Faith is a gift freely given and faith should be shared freely by all of us as Filipinos. Ika nga, ang pananampalatayang yan na may tatak Pinoy. Maraming salamat, Father. Tatak Katolikong Pinoy. <laughs> yes, to be more specific. Tatak na Katolikong Pinoy. So, Father, sa puntong ito po ay uh, hihingi na po namin ang inyong uh, pagbabasbas at pag-anyaya po sa ating mga manonood sa susunod na Miyerkules ang kanilang aantabayanan. Okay, so... Ito ito po ang huling yugto ng ating history of, 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 of the 100 years of the introduction of Christianity and the process of Christianity. No, ang susunod pong mga kabanata ay ang how to give and share that faith in two segments of this following Wednesday ng susunod ng mga Merkulis ng buwan ng antabayanan niyo po yan. No, sa ngayon po, magdasal po tayo at pagpasalamat sa Diyos sa biyaya ng buhay, biyaya ng kalayaan, at lalo na sa biyaya ng pag-ibig. Sa ngalan ng Ama, ng Anak, ng Espiritu Santo, Amen. Amen. Amang makapangyarihan, bigyan ko ngayon ng lakas sa pamamagitan ng Espiritu Santo na maisabuhay at maibahagay namin ang pananata, pananampalatayang tinanggap namin sa pamamagitan ng Espiritu Santo. Na hari nawa kami maging liwanag 
katulad ni Kristo sa mga kapatid naming nababalot sa kadiliman ng kadiliman ng kasakiman ng kabangmangan na hari nawa ang aming halimbawang Kristiyano ay magbigay gabay at maging tungkod para makita nila si Kristo sa aming pamumuhay. At ito po hinihiling namin sa pamamagitan ng iyong anak at ng Espiritu Santo kasama ni Maria ngayon at magpasawalang hanggan. Amen. Amen. Sumain niyo ang Panginoon at, at pagpalain kayo ng makapangyarihang Diyos, Ama, Anak at Espiritu Santo. Amen. Amen. Humayo tayo bilang mga Kristiyanong handang magbahagi kay Kristo.